All right, so I'm going to try to explain here how to um, do cardiac vagal uh, barrier reflex analysis as well as heart rate variability analysis. Um, so both of these are going to start with um, data that's been processed through this uh, program here. So this is the uh, muscle sympathetic nervous activity program that also takes in ECG and um, some uh, a blood pressure treating things. So there's no data in this right now, but um, hopefully you're familiar with this already, and um, this won't be something I need to talk about anymore for this. Let me just get out of this. All right, so once you uh, once you use that program to analyze data, you're going to get a file that looks something like uh, like this here. So you're going to see a bunch of stuff across the top. Um, uh, some nerve data, some blood pressure data, as well as some information about the R to R interval from the ECG and the R wave time. Um, so that's going to be, so you're going to use this, you're going to use R wave time, and you're going to use P to solve blood pressure. So these two are going to be what gets used um, for everything we're going to be doing. All right, so I have this template I've uh, made up to help with this. Um, typically, I put the word template at the front just so you can replace that with the, um, the name of your participant, so either subject number or whatever else you want to call it. So let's just call this test. So everything today that I um, go through, I'll label as test, and that will be like our participant uh, number. So all right, let's open this up. So there is a macro involved with this um, uh, Excel template. Um, it's only going to be used for heart rate variability analysis, but generally speaking, just go ahead and enable um, the macros and anything that uh, you use for analysis as long as you know who made it. Um, and then it's going to bring you to this instructions tab here. So this is going to talk um, step by step through the process. Um, so at the top, it's instructing you on how to input the data from this um, file that again came from that LabVIEW nerve and blood pressure file or nerve and blood pressure program. It's going to talk you through how to do cardiovagal bare reflex using um, Hemolab's uh, analysis uh, software. And it's going to talk you through how to do heart rate variability analysis using Kubio software. So I'll probably split this up into two videos, one for the cardiovascular barrier reflex analysis, which I'll do now, and then I'll do another video for the heart rate variability analysis. Um, this is a little time consuming. It's uh, Once you do it a handful of times, it does get much faster, um, and this template does speed it up compared to what it would be if you try to do all this manually, um, but it is a little bit time consuming. It's not difficult, it's just time consuming, and you gotta do all the steps properly. Um, but it doesn't take a lot of skill or uh, knowledge to do so. Um, and then in the end, we're going to get a, a file. Uh, well, we're going to get uh, all the data in a single uh, row, which will help to put it into whatever sort of Excel um, database or other database that you're using to keep your data for all your participants. All right. So um, first, let's do um, just inputting the data. So uh, I might have to read some of this, but I'll, uh, some of it I already know, so I'll just kind of skim over it. But again, read through all of this, and it will help you uh, sort of keep on track with what you're doing. So first thing is to put this data into the tab here called um, LabVIEW Data, and you can see that right here. So I'll click that. It's a blank spreadsheet that's um, looking for the information on this spreadsheet. So we're just going to highlight it all. So I'm just going to control A and control C to copy and just put it all right there. Um, so this template file is looking for this data in this order, in this format. Um, if you, for whatever reason, only had R wave time and peaks of solid um, blood pressure for each cardiac cycle, you could simply put these here with some sort of header file, or header title, and it would the, the template would still work. It's just I set this up specifically to work with this data. All right, so once this data is in, we no longer need this open. 
So we're going to just close out of this. Uh, we'll save it. And we don't need to keep it on the clipboard. All right, so you can make this big now. All right, so the data is in here. It's being read. Um, let's go back to the instructions tab. And it's going to tell you to go to this tab, the RR interval to stop blood pressure tab, and see if everything uh, looks the way it should. Um, so we have some graphs here. So this is R to R interval being graphed. Um, this this is systolic blood pressure being graphed, and that's basically what it would typically look like, um, as long as there aren't any weird shifts or uh, large spikes, um, you're probably good. Um, but again, this is uh, pretty typical. This file, this uh, this template also has the ability to do a level adjustment. So if we were doing a level adjustment, what I mean by that is it could um, change these systolic blood pressures to, um, so this is from the phenomenon, it could change these to match uh, more closely to an absolute blood pressure uh, reading from something like a dynamic blood pressure cuff. And um, essentially it just looks at the difference between the phenometer average pressure, the Dynamap or other blood pressure cuff average pressure, and it just level cracks them up, shifts them all down or shifts them all up to whatever it needs to be. Um, if you were to do that, you would put the average uh, phenometer pressure here, uh, we're talking systolic pressure here, the average um, systolic blood pressure from your, uh, your other blood pressure device that you assume to be accurate right there, it would calculate the difference and then if you just scroll down a little bit, there's this uh, yellow cell here. Generally speaking, anything in yellow is something that you should be concerned about uh, potentially inputting uh, information into. But anyways, this yellow cell currently is uh, highlighted with the uncorrect, uh, uncorrected systolic blood pressure. That means the, the pressure we entered in is not going to adjust in any way. You can use this down arrow to then select level corrected if you Want to do so. Um, and again, all it would do is level correct this, shifting it up or down. And if we did that, we would see that data here. But instead, we're just, we have a, a straight line across it. We don't have any sort of level correction entered. Okay. So without doing level correction, um, you don't have to worry about it. If you are doing level correction, you do have to worry about that. Uh, so Again, the data is in. Let's go back to the instructions tab. We, data is in. Everything looks good. We know it's good. Um, we're decided on level correction or not, and we've done that. Um, all right, so let's go and do the actual cardiac barrier reflex uh, sensitivity analysis. Um, so with this, you need to make a text file. So let me just move this over. Here's whatever folder that we're saving our data. So this is the, the template that's right here. Um, so let's just make a text file. So right click, go down the new, uh, and click text file. And we'll just, again, write test, but normally you would put your participant's uh, ID number there, um, just to kind of keep track of things. All right, so let's open this text file up. And again, it's just a blank text file. Um, so now we have the text file there. We have the template here. And what we need to do is go to the the data that we were just talking about. So we're back to that tab that has the, um, the graphs in it. So this uh, RR interval systolic blood pressure tab. And if we were doing a level correction, the data that you want is in these two columns here, so G and H. If you're not doing a level correction, you want to use the, the data in columns A and B. Um, notice column A and column G have identical data. That's the uh, RR interval data, and um, we're not doing anything with that when we do the blood pressure level correction. But this data here um, in column B and column H are different. So, for instance, if you were to put something here, let's say the average phenomena pressure was 120, but the average uh, pressure from your external source was 110. Um, so that means you're off by 10 here. Notice how everything here is now. And column H is now going to be 10 less than what's here in column B. So that's what it does. Um, and then with that, we would have the phenometer systolic blood pressure level corrected graph filled in. 
And again, it looks the same other than the fact that it shifted downward by about 10 millimeters of mercury. But anyways, um, let's not bother with that. Um, uh, and you would want to switch this too. Um, it, that's used for some other calculations. But um, let's stick with the uncorrected for now. Um, and we will simply use this data. All right, so what you need to do is figure out where the data ends in this uh, column. And you can't do that by simply going to the bottom. And I'll show you why. So I'm just going to do control shift down, which will take me to the bottom. Um, we have all these NAs here because what this is, is that these aren't simple data points. These are formulas here that are looking at the data and doing something with it. Um, and the same goes for up here where there's numbers. These are formulas here. So uh, going to the bottom doesn't help, but what you can do is look at this red cell here. It says A533. That tells you that the bottom of the real data is um, in column A is uh, the 533rd uh, uh, row down. So if we just type in A533 up into this little box here, hit enter, it's going to take us to the bottom of our data. So that's just a, something I built in there to make it more convenient to find the bottom. Um, so now we're here, you can see the difference between the real data and um, where it gets into where there's no data points and it's just uh, an NA. All right, so we need to copy this real data um, to our text file that we've made, so this, this blank text file here. So the easiest way to do that is to just highlight these bottom two cells of real data, hit Control, Shift, and then Up, and it's going to highlight everything from that point upwards, and now just hit Control c to copy, click over to the text file, hit Control v to paste, and now you have all the data text file. Um, so just save the text file and you can exit out of the text file. Alright, so um, let's just go back to the instructions tab to stay on track here. Um, so at this point we have um, we just closed out of the text file. So we're down to um, row 17 here with the instructions. So the next thing we have to do um, might be a little tricky depending on the computer you're using, um, at least the first time you go to do it. Um, and what we're going to be doing is editing the extension of the text file. Um, so notice on my computer here, the so we have test.txt. So the extension is the .txt that tells the computer that it's a text file. Um, so Windows computers, um, modern Windows computers, will hide the extensions from you so that you can't edit them or get them confused or mess with them because it affects what programs are going to open it and it's just, I guess, easier for um, most people who aren't going to need to edit the extensions to just not see them. Um, but if you um, are doing what we're going to do, you need to be able to see them. So just go to a search engine somewhere on the internet and ask, ask the search engine how to make uh, extensions visible um, for known file types in Windows. And it talks about that a little bit here, um, but I'm not going to explain how to do that. Just look it up online. It's not that hard. Um, but once you do that, you'll then start seeing these extensions. So again, .txt here, this Excel file, .xlfx. Um, again, that would all be hidden from you if you didn't um, change it to see the extensions. But anyway, so we're going to change the extension here because the analysis program in Hemolab doesn't use .txt text files. It uses um, .asc text files. And when you change that, so again, you're just replacing those letters, it's going to try to warn you that you might not want to do that. It's fine. You're, uh, just go ahead and do it. Um, and so you're going to hit yes there. I have my computer set up so it recognizes .asc text files as something Excel can open. Um, you'll probably just have a, a blank symbol there. Um, but Excel can open it, uh, a normal text document uh, like Notepad can open it. Uh, regard it's just a different type of text file. Okay, so now that this is um, changed to that, we can then um, 
use the Hemolab analysis uh, software to work with this data. Um, so we're up to this point here, and as I list here, you can be reading the Hemolab uh, PDF uh, manual to explain this part, or you can just follow these instructions or this video. All right, so I'm going to type in analyze. There it is, analyzer. That's the name of the, the, the program in Hemolab, and you'll see this symbol here. That's, that's when you know you have the right program. So I'm going to click and open that. That just opens up uh, this sort of blank looking uh, software program, um, and this is the analyzer in Hemolab. All right, so the next thing we're going to have to do is to, um, right here, number 21, is to open and load the uh, this text file into this. So we're going to go to the analyzer, the file, hit load data. Now we have to look for this text file. I have it just in my downloads folder. So here it is. So just click it and open it. And we have to tell what type of data is in this text file. So we are doing beat by beat data and the intervals are in milliseconds. So beat by beat, enter beat, interval in milliseconds and click OK. Um, so now we have basically the same um, two graphs that we had in our Excel template uh, visible to us. So the next thing you need to do is go down to this channel 2. So this is, I believe it's channel 1 and channel 2. It might be labeling it. Actually, I think it is labeled as channel 0 and channel A, but regardless, go to the second one where the systolic blood pressure is. You're going to right click it over here and activate this channel. So now you have this little blue A here telling you it's active. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is actually tell, do the barrel reflex analysis. I'm sorry, we have to highlight the data and then we'll do that. So click over here to the left of the um, y-axis just so you make sure that you get all this early data. And you're going to make a box here that just goes all the way over it. Now it doesn't matter on a, a x and y, sorry, it doesn't matter on a, a y-axis whether or not you highlight all the data or not. All that matters is that you cover the x-axis across that you want in there. So that's why I go to the left of the y-axis and just go all the way to the end because I've already, I've already edited the files um, to give me just the data I want to analyze. So I don't need to cut off any data anywhere using this program. All right. So now we have this red box telling us the whole thing is going to be analyzed. And we're down to this step here. So click calculate and then bear reflex. So calculate, go down, bear reflex, and we need to tell it that the y-axis data is in channel one. So again, it, um, I, I'm not sure if it's channel one, two, or channel zero and one. Um, some programs use zero as the first channel. But regardless, channel one will work in, um, with this kind of data um, through this process. And uh, the rest of this is stuff that you can just leave as is. Uh, if you read in the Hemolab manual, it will explain all this. Um, but these are pretty standard values for all these thresholds and things. Um, so you should be OK to leave it as is um, unless you want to go a little more in depth. Then click OK. And here is the analyzed data. Um, so this is showing the sequences of uh, RR intervals and systolic blood pressure where they trend in the same direction. This is what is analyzed to determine cardiac barrier reflex. So the steeper these slopes, the more sensitive the barrier reflex. This is the data that where they don't go in the same direction, where they go in opposite directions. So both of these are sequences of four or more. So if the data, uh, so if, see how there's more than four data points in each one of these lines, this is one where they're going cool. Um, if it's less than four, it does not um, uh, contribute to these uh, to this analysis. It's assumed to, I guess, be too variable to get a, a good line um, and a good slope out of. But anyways, this is associated with cardiac barrier reflex. This, I believe, they associate um, with sympathetic activity, where cardiac barrier reflex is a little uh, typically thought of as parasympathetic activity. I also don't think this non-barrier reflex sequences, um, this 
this whole thing is something that's very common or people would, would uh, buy in too much where this I think uh, people buy into a little bit more all right so this is what we care about not so much this but we're just gonna save it all anyways because um, it's easy to do that all right so now we are up to we just did this we see the graphs Let's scroll down in the instructions some okay so click file and then save and name it something that makes sense to you so click file save and um, again we'll just call this test instead of our participant number and uh, let's see I recommend calling it cardiac bear reflex raw data so test uh, cardiac bear reflex raw data okay it's not really raw data but it's raw in the sense that we're going to be doing more to it after this all right so save that um, and then um, we'll get to that in a second the next thing we want to do is right here we're going to um, pay, we're going to copy and paste this data so we're saving it in two different ways and the reason we're saving it in two different ways what i already did is going to be saving these lines um, the actual individual data points that make up these lines so that we could recreate this later if we wanted to what i'm about to do is going to give you the information you're most likely going to be analyzing and potentially recording in a paper or something all right so I'll go to edit copy the data and this is going to be entered into the raw data output cardiovascular um, in this template file all right, so raw data and output cardiovagal. All right, hold on a second. I think I messed this up. We gotta enter both of these. Hold on. Yeah. So let's put that data here in this cardiovagal results, not the raw results. Um, and we're just going to paste it in, so control V. And you have the, the file name there, which is why it makes sense to make the file name something that is meaningful. And all the data from this section right here um, is going to be there. The raw data output, so at this point we can close out of this and this. So the raw data output is that file that we made. Um, so let's open that up. Um, it's going to ask me how to open it because I don't have a, anything associated with this file yet. I, I don't think there's an extension on it, um, but it's essentially another text file. So you could open it in Notepad. You can open it in Excel. Um, let's just open Excel so you can see it a little easier. Excel is going to ask you if, you if you're sure you want to open it because it doesn't recognize the file type. Just hit yes. Um, so here's the data. So again, here are those different lines. Each one of these is a line and then you have um, some data points here. So blood pressure one, two, three, whatever. So each one of these, these, this is a line, this is a line, this is a line. All right. So that's why we save this um, just so we have it for the future. So let's copy all this. So control A to highlight, control C to copy, click over here and control V to paste. All right, so we no longer need this. It's already pasted in. We don't need to keep it on the clipboard. All right, so this is supposed to graph this out. Um, for some reason, it's not working the way it should. It should have all those lines graphed, and not just two of them, um, which are based on uh, this information here. Uh, but regardless, it doesn't really matter. You have the data if you ever wanted to recreate that graph. All right. So we have the, the raw data, which is this with the individual lines. We have the results data here. And now both of these are going to be uh, showing up over here in this access data um, tab where um, let's put in our test uh, person. So again, test is the name we're giving it. Normally you put subject number there. If you want to put any comments, you can type them there, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So my comment, 
and you have everything related to the cardiac baroreflex data right here up until this point. So notice the change in color from gray to white up till this point is all the cardiac var vagal baroreflex and from this point over is the heart rate variability uh, data that we'll get out of the QVM software. So I'll make that a, a separate video, but I'll have it starting at this point. Um, but regardless, once you have what you want in this um, in this template, all you're going to have to do is copy and paste um, this row two from the access data tab into wherever it is that you're going to store your data with all your participants. Um, make sure you do a, a copy and then a paste special as as values, not as formulas, because all of these have formulas in them, and you don't want the formula, you want the actual numbers that are calculated by those formulas. All right, so let's just save this. Um, that's the end of the cardiac variable bear reflex analysis. So again, I'll make another video for the QBF software, um, and I'll upload both.